Yeah. You trying to go to Wendy's and get you a four for four, but now your four for four costs what's it? Thirty dollars? Thirty dollars? Your four for four goes from four dollars to thirty dollars. Is that what we talking about right now? Tonight. Once again, there was a misconnection at the Chiefs Stadium. What else is new? It was the night before Christmas, and bang! And Simone Biles is flipping more than a somersault at these haters. <laughs> See these stories and more of what we're talking about on this episode of The Blackman Show. Welcome to the BS. Now let's go! What is good? What is good? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Seven Blackman and I hope you all had an excellent and safe New Year's. My wife and I spent hours with the baby this year and uh, I took it upon myself to make my wife a wonderful Chicago style pizza from scratch. And uh, fun fact, it's probably a good idea if you include the yeast anytime you're making any sort of or most sort of bread based products. I, you know, otherwise you might end up with a cracker crust. Just, you know, just putting it out there. And we have a great gift for our 250 of subs. So I'm hoping that'll be you. So make sure you grab yourself some Blackman Show gear from our new online store. Then grab your favorite cup of Sanaa as we dig in. Gypsies banned from Missouri. Okay, so what are we talking about here? But this is the Blackman Show, a place where we can take a look at the news with a little bit of seven cents. So hit that like, hit the subscribe, and share with your peeps so they will join the tribe. And remember, we are having a drive, man, it's all these bars, <laughs> for 250 subscribers. So basically we've got the young lady named Gypsy Rose Blanchard, right? from originally from Louisiana, but she was here imprisoned in the state of Missouri due to uh, her involvement in the unaliving of her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, who was a caregiver down in Louisiana, right? Let's do a little background searching just so that way we can have a, an understanding of what's going on, right? So Dee Dee Blanchard was a young lady from Louisiana who was a caregiver, and she may have allegedly also had something to do with the unaliving of her own mother. Now at 24 years old, she married 17-year-old Rod Blanchard, with whom the two had their daughter, Gypsy Rose, in 1991. So after her marriage to Rod quickly dissolves, Dee Dee and Gypsy move in with the family where Dee Dee immediately begins her claims that her daughter's health is not exactly up to par. So according to Dee Dee, Gypsy had all sorts of ailments from sleep apnea to muscular dystrophy to leukemia. But it turns out none of that was true. So after years of this treatment, Dee Dee was thought to actually have Munchausen syndrome as early as 2009, although she was never officially diagnosed herself. So as the daughter Gypsy gets older, she gets more emboldened to sneak out and meet up with strange men and have sex with them in hotels. Eventually, she actually meets up with a young man by the name of Nicholas Goddajan from Wisconsin on this Christian dating website. So, you know, we got young adults here. One thing leads to another, and they end up having uh, plotting to have her mother unalived. I mean, yeah, and they even follow through with it. Nicholas does the deed, and they go to trial. He's found guilty of first-degree homicide, for which he got life in prison, and she received 10 years for second-degree homicide herself. I think she had to serve 8.5%, I'm sorry, 85% of the time that she got, so 85% being about eight, uh, eight and a half years or nine years, or something like that, and considering the time that she had when she was in jail, in addition to the time that she actually served, which was seven years, that came up to almost nine years that she was actually behind bar. So she basically was released from prison on December 28th, and that was that. Now, I know I kind of glossed over the, the, the entire of the story, so you guys can go ahead and check it out. Wikipedia, Google, check out all the outlets. There's even uh, several stories, documentaries, and movies made about this situation. So I, it's, it's, it, it's definitely out there in the zeitgeist. But one thing I thought that was notable was the fact that she actually gained weight in her first year behind bars. I think one of the officers said something along the lines that like, usually on average with their, when people are getting used to being behind bars, they you, generally you lose about 10 pounds or so. Whereas Gypsy actually gained about 15 pounds in her first year in prison. So I, I thought that was quite pretty interesting to note. So what's been going on in the days since her release, right? Well, basically she's been kicked out of the state of Missouri due to being a safety risk. <laughs> So basically, here's what happened, right? So the Chiefs are playing against the Bengals this previous weekend, right? And of course, it's well-known news that 
your girl Taylor Swift has been dating one Travis Kelsey of the Kansas City Chiefs, right? So we know that these two are one, right? We, we know this, okay? So your girl Gypsy Rose basically decided that she was just going to meet Taylor Swift. Now, granted, she did say that Taylor Swift's music was the inspiration to her getting through and surviving her time while behind bars, but I just really think it's interesting that she felt that, that she was just about to DJ her way to a skinny black sort of <laughs> meeting uh, <laughs> with Taylor Swift at the Chiefs game. It's not like they had any sort of previous uh, notification or anything like that. It's not like she sent word to Taylor Swift, hey, I'm going to wipe the bam. Nothing like that. There was no sort of coordination in this meeting that was supposed to take place at all. This, in my very minor and small thinking, was a publicity stunt. And honestly, I think it worked because I, I don't doubt, I don't doubt at some point Taylor's gonna reach out and they're gonna end up talking to one another and they're gonna meet and all that, whatever. So she's already got plans to meet up with Taylor as part of Taylor's 2024 tour when she's, in down, when she's down in New Orleans, which is the state that Gypsy Rose is actually from. So I don't doubt that these two are gonna actually meet. So it, I don't know, but to me, it just seems kind of a, uh, just it just it just seems kind of kind of weird that your girl Gypsy was trying to pull a hustling flow. Hey, shout out to. Well, you better show me some love for this one, man. Huh. You know, one day, <laughs> one day you and me gonna be on tour, man. I ain't gonna do this shit for you. Tour, <laughs> what tour? Shit, man. Man, you know a fucked up nigga do some wild shit to you right now. Hey, 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 come on, man. Come on, 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 baby. Let's get the fuck up. Shout out to all y'all who got that hustling and flow reference. Now, as far as it being a publicity stunt, I mean, let's think about it. She was gifted with like so many pleasantries and gifts and things, you know, as somebody who was thought to be sick or dying because of what her mother put her through. Gifts from uh, Miranda, Miranda Lambert, Miranda somebody. Trips and things, uh, uh, a gift from the McDonald house, um, uh, uh, going to Disney World, you know, so, so, Part of me honestly wonders if she's actually missing part of like if part of her is kind of missing being in the spotlight, you know what I'm saying? Because when you think about it, she was the center of attention, even though it was under false pretenses. And now we're in the me generation or the where everything is about me and social media and, and what have you that I can't help but think that maybe she's kind of missing it and was like, you know what? You, you, you got any more of that fame, baby? You, you got any more of that attention? <laughs> now, again, this, that's not to diminish or to put down what she's been through because actually she's been through some horrific stuff. But I still think it's kind of funny, like when you think about it, I mean, she tried to show it to the Chiefs game with her, hus her new husband in tow. Then they were turned away. And the whole time while I'm sitting there, I'm like, she already has a husband, right? And then I started thinking back to the actual story of what took place, right? So remember that guy I was talking about before? There was a guy named Nicholas Gottajan who she met with, a guy from Wisconsin, who actually did the deed with her mom. Sorry, did the deed to her mom, right? So he did the do he did it. He did the activity. He did the unenlivening activity, right? I mean, honestly, Nicholas Gottajan is the one that I'm feeling kind of sorry for just just kind of again when i'm looking at the whole of the situation from the macro perspective i mean he's mentally challenged or at least on the autism spectrum with a record of sa and his own psychologist's testimony wasn't even allowed to be used in the trial i mean <laughs> it, it seems to me honestly like this guy did this basically to get some at the end of the day. And now he just has to spend his life in prison talking about that one time when he actually got some ass voluntarily 
way back when. But I'd love to know your thoughts on this, so please hit up the comment section. Let's know what you think. We also have the story of Kansas City good man, Chris Good, owner and founder of the chain of Ruby Jeans Juiceries found here in Kansas City and the surrounding area. So we kind of talked about the property tax increases that have taken place recently and how it affected people within Jackson County and especially within the Kansas City area. Now, for those of you who would like a refresher, please feel free to check out our previous episode. But to make it pretty quick and simple, uh, over the past four years, property taxes have been uh, increased twice, basically. And the reason this is being done is so county property values can be brought up to market. Now, what this market adjustment is doing is basically adding a 30% increase on average to every person's property across the county. Now, that's 30% in some areas. In some places, in some cases, this is as high as 200, even 300%. So that's put the onus on Kansas City and Jackson County residents to pay these exorbitant tax bills before the end of the year last year, 2023, even though there was a whole class action suit that was placed against the county. And the state has ruled that basically due to the way that the county went about raising those property taxes, in addition to the way that they went around assessing everyone's property in some cases not even at all uh, shout out to tyler technologies for not doing the job but cashing that damn check but <laughs> because of that a class action suit has been filed against the county the state agrees that the way the county went about raising these fees was unconstitutional however at the same time they're also saying that people should make sure that they pay their tax bills so that way they aren't found delinquent for the year and that and that way they can mitigate and fight any sort of assessment or, or reassessment value differentials uh, in the following year, th this year. So the state is basically saying, yeah, uh, they did wrong. They, they doing you wrong. They doing you wrong as hell, but you better still pay. You, you better still pay. I, but look, I hate this. We can't do nothing about it, but these are the rules. We don't, it's an election year, baby. You know we trying to play this game just right. We got to make sure if we make some changes, we got to make some changes that's going to make sure that we stay in office for the next couple of years. Dead, quit playing. Quit playing. Anyway, so in all of that, we didn't take a look at how this is affecting small businesses, right? So in comes Chris Good of Ruby Jeans Juiceries. So last year, he had to pay property taxes of about $30,000 or actually $3,300. Now this year, after this property tax assessment that's gone around for the entire of the county, the man's tax bill has gone up more than 650% to $25,000. I mean, that's, that's 25, 650%, a 650% increase, okay? Now, <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't know about you, but if I have anything just about anything that I'm paying for, already paying for, and suddenly the bill increases by 650%, baby, you may as well go ahead and take that back. You, you, you can go ahead and have that. You, now, I, hey, hey, shout out, shout out to Frat because I'm sure he got it a whole lot better than your boy. But listen, 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 Linda, listen. I'm just letting it be known that ain't no way. Ain't no way, baby. Ain't <laughs> 650%? Quit playing. I don't care if I was only spending a dollar on something and all of a sudden it was $6.50. That's, I was like, yeah, $5 or $7.50. That's still, that's still, too, are you crazy? What? What's something that costs a dollar? Dollar menu items. You go to, you go to Burger King, you go to McDonald's, you trying to go to Wendy's and get you a four for four, but now your four for four costs, what's it, $30? $30? Your four for four goes from $4 to $30. What are we talking about? Is that what we talking about right now? So why is this happening? Again, this is being done in order to raise county property values in alignment with national standards. But I don't know, I just kind of wonder <laughs> why we aren't working as hard to raise incomes to match the new economics that we find ourselves in. Like we keep on raising, it's almost like someone is saying, oh, these people have too much freedom. They're spending too much, they're traveling too much. Raise the taxes, raise it, raise it. Uh-uh, they, 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 they don't have enough things to worry about. Raise them taxes, now! Now at the same time, we've already talked about Missouri's minimum wage going up to $16, but it's like, we're, it's like we, we're continually doing this chase thing where it, 
taxes go up, pay may go up, or minimum wage goes up, taxes go up, minimum wage goes up, taxes go up. Do you know how, how weird it has to feel to be an accountant, to be a college graduate coming out uh, as an accountant making $20, $25 an hour, only to realize that you could stop that and make almost the same thing flipping burgers? Like that is that is crazy. Now again, I would think the the road to advancement is a little bit different for an accountant versus a burger flipper, but I digress. But it's like we're spiraling into this economic entropy of prices going or taxes and prices going up, then it, minimum wage going up, then prices going up more, then minimum wage going up, and meanwhile the middle class is completely shrinking, completely shrinking to. I mean, basically at, to the point where you just have the poor and the rich. The poor are going to be people who make, I don't know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars or less, and then rich is going to be anything above two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. That's uh, and matter of fact, it probably that would probably be like low, low class rich, <laughs> poor, poor rich. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's going to be the new thing. But I think it's interesting to note that during the whole of this thing that's going on, you've got. County executive Frank White's home property value that only went up seven percent. Seven percent. He's the man that's over this whole exchange is taking place and everybody's property value is going up, but his only went up seven percent. You got some people going up 12, 15, 30, 200, 300 percent, 650 percent in value, but his, but oh, his only went up seven percent. Go figure. I will do my best to make sure I go out and support Ruby Jeans, and I hope you all will as well, just so the man can help pay his tax bill at this point, because this almost feels like some movie or a TV show or something like that, where we gotta do a rent party to help people out so they can make sure that they make it to the next day. I mean, if that's what it's coming down to, party at my crib next week. But that's where I'll leave this thing right now. I'm hopeful that Frat will get himself out of this bind and can maybe mitigate the payments, uh, slow it down, reduce it some kind of way. A lot of people are doing this, trying to get into reassessments, something. I'm hopeful that there's some sort of relief for him so he doesn't have to pay the entire amount, and especially not all at once. Speaking of Kansas City, Parade Park has been sold. So what's going on and why is it important? Now, in a very macro examination, I'll just put it out like this if you are from the midwest and you probably know that parade park is a 510 unit co-op that's here in kansas city and it's actually the previous homes of people like reggie jackson and bruce r watkins and actually the current home of our mayor quentin lucas's mother so basically due to a lack of tenants and livable space the six million dollar evaluated property couldn't keep up with its 10 million dollars worth of renovations that were needed so because of that it was recently bought by the city from hud for 10 Ten dollars ten dollars that's it then after that immediately transferred the property over to Indianapolis based property development company Flaherty Collins properties for redevelopment so why do we care about this personally I think you should care about your history this is the oldest black owned co-op in the nation in the nation and now it's being taken over by a redevelopment company that's going to do god knows what with it but at the same time you realize the buildings are in disrepair due to fire and water damage and the cost to fix it like i said is about 10 million dollars so they're not able to pull that in with the small amount of people that are still living in the area. So the cost to redevelop the area is gonna cost between 80 and $120 million, and that's gonna be done by Flaherty and Collins property. So as the oldest black owned housing co-op in the nation, it just seems weird. It feels kind of bad that we're kind of, that it's being sold out and given to another company, you know, at, 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 at pennies, I can't even say pennies on a dollar, at micro cents. Micro cents on a dollar. Ten dollars is being sold for ten dollars. And then it's gonna be redeveloped into an area that you know the people who live there currently will not be able to afford. So I don't know. I, it's like on one hand, you want the area taken care of, but you know that whatever renovations that are gonna be done in such a location, like in close proximity to downtown Kansas City, you got the Negro Leagues uh right down the street, then you also have the Negro was the Negro Leagues and the Hall of Fame, as well as this newly built Parade Park, which is like walking distance from that area. Now, I said this area, this housing area is called Parade Park, but right up the street and within walking distance is also Parade Park, an actual park with 
basketball courts, baseball diamonds, and things like that at it. So if you were to Google right now, Parade Park, Kansas City, that park is actually what comes up instead of the housing area that again is or was the oldest black owned housing co-op in the nation. So I, I don't know, it just seems it, it, it makes it, so I mean, it just helps to usher in the erasure of the old Parade Park, which was done years ago. So that would mean, hey, wait a minute. Now, in the name of one Simone Biles, I just thought I'd say this to you unhappy garden tools. Leave that poor child alone. Leave, leave, the, leave the damn child alone. I mean, look, so there was a recent interview of her husband. I, I know that's a foreign concept to all of you, but this is her husband, say it with me, husband there you go husband there you go see where he talked about how he and the multifaceted olympian met right so he feels like he's a prize and again she was right there in the room with him so it's not like he was saying something oh, i'm gonna say this wild it, it, it's gonna be crazy when he get get back home she's right there with him and she's egging him on because she feels the same way why why are you all offended that that's i think that's the best question <laughs> So that, that's that's what I really want to have a that's what I really want to have a problem with because I, I think it's just weird that people have so much to say about the young love verbs in their wedded bliss, even going as far as trying to compare their marriage to Taylor Swift dating Kansas City's Travis Kelsey, which coincidentally got to be about the bag. I mean, because that's the only way that you could justify this look. I mean, aren't these the same people who was talking about Simone's hair when she got married, talking about how she need to do this, that, and whatever to her hair, to her natural tresses that she had not? Again, in her wedding? In her wedding. Something that these women who had a whole lot to say about Jonathan Owens when he had something to say, can't say about themselves. Like, you know? And again, and I would think if you do have a happy marriage or happy, happy, uh, successful marriage, that you're not out talking shit about your spouse. Personally, I'm of the mindset that there are people who still want to be married. There are people who still want to have good relationships and people who realize that we do need one another and we don't have to sit and act like one is better than the other or what have you. Now, the man that's saying that he feels like he's a prize, I personally feel the same way too, especially with the way that women are just giving it away and acting like anybody can have it. If anybody can have it, then it ain't a prize, then is it, ma'am? The prize is what the man can offer. The prize is his name. The prize is his house. The prize is his his benefits and all the stuff that he has to give, right? I, I thought that's what the prize was. I thought that's why the story is Cinderella. It's about the women who was trying to all be chose by one dude. It wasn't about one dude who uh, one dude among many who was trying to be chose by a woman. That's not what it was. And again, hey, Nate. Blame the patriarchy, blame all sorts of things that you want to do. But to me, it just seems like, and I, and, and I can't lie, I love the fact that she, there's these women out here who, who decided to hit the streets to go out talking to individuals, just random individuals to ask them, do you even know who Jonathan Owens is? I mean, hell, we don't know who you are either. And, and you don't know who I am, right? Okay, cool. My point being, why does any of that matter? Why why does it seem like, or why in your book does it seem like notoriety or having some sort of name matters when it comes to if you're a viable candidate for a partner for the person that you're trying to get with? I mean, like, and then if 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 Simone Biles is somebody that you are actually are putting into the stratosphere or putting or holding on a higher echelon or or putting on a pedestal or however you guys see or view Simone Biles as your queen. She's your gymnast queen every four years because y'all know y'all don't give a damn about her in them years in between and y'all was mad at her when she decided to take the year off. Anyway, but if she is the person who you all feel is this person who is at this level at this at this point that you all want to put your pray heap your praises on to and all that stuff then wouldn't you want her to be with somebody that she thinks is a catch like what do you would you want wouldn't you want her to be with somebody who think that she thinks is a catch or you or do you only feel like she can only have the people that you approve that you deem approvable uh for her life
I, I'm, I'm just trying to understand exactly how this is supposed to work since every, since all of y'all got it all figured out. It seems like there are more people who that are afraid to admit it, that they're alone as well as admit that they're actually happy with the person that they're with because they still got friends that they have to uh, co-mingle with and some of those friends don't have people and it's easier to commiserate than to say, I love my man. <laughs> and I hope you get you one too. I mean, that that's hard to say, but but it's easy to be like, oh yeah, girl, I got a man, but you know he ain't nothing, <laughs> or 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 he ain't whatever, or or it's, it's only Jonathan Owens. What does that mean? Does he treat you well? Do you treat him well? Do you take care of him? Does he take care of you? Like I think that's really what it should come down to at the end of the day. Like all that. Because cause I could have swore a gold medal ain't never made a plate for nobody. Uh, a, a gold medal ain't never bought a house for nobody. Uh, a, 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 a gold medal ain't never did none of that stuff that y'all are saying that, that I, I guess that she automatically is good at because she has gold medals. Like, do, do you know that she knows how to, can, she can flip, can she flip a pancake? I don't, I don't know. Maybe she can. Maybe she's dope at it. But I'm just saying, you don't know, but everybody's just making these assumptions based on their own feelings and thoughts on how they feel. Just say that you don't like men. Just say that, you, just say that no man is worthy. Just say that. Just, just say that you, no man is worthy. You don't like men. And, and, and at the end of the day, you would rather be alone. Please just say that. That way you can save everybody all the misery of trying to sit and have these weird conversations with you that are really going nowhere with this goofy logic that you have that's trying to, that tries to let everybody know that you're happy being by your damn self. And if you are, then why you gotta keep shouting it to everybody? You ain't gotta tell everybody that you're happy. <laughs> just like vegans ain't gotta go around telling everybody they don't eat meat. I'm just saying. And if you don't eat meat, that's your prerogative too. Pause. Getting back to Simone, I think it was dope that she decided to defend her man and chime back at the haters and let them know that they just angry at the fact that they don't have a husband. And to that extent, I have to say, I agree. So we've got murder at Christmas time. What could be better? So basically what happened and what's going to happen next? <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I mean, there's always these times in when I'm kind of looking at humanity, like I can judge it, right? But there's always these times when I'm looking at humanity and I, and I start feeling like, you know, I, I, have, I have hope in, in, in humanity. And, and then there's these times when I'm, I have, I have no faith whatsoever. This might be one of those latter times. So basically what I'm talking about is in Largo, Florida, right? There was a family who went out shopping for Christmas presents after they're done everybody's going over to Big Mama's house, right? So you've got the mother, her 23-year-old daughter, as well as the daughter's 11-month-old child. And then the mother also has two sons, one being 15, one being 14, okay? So everybody goes out Christmas shopping. After that, they decide to reconvene at Grandmama's house. Whole time that they were out, the brothers are bickering. 14-year-old is accusing the mother of spending more on the 15-year-old. They start getting into an argument of some sort to the point where they get in the house and it's starting to get physical. So the sister, holding her 11-month-old in the carrier, tells the kids, hey, y'all need to stop this stuff. Uh, tells her little brothers, hey, you all need to stop this, right? Uncle jumps in and says, hey, y'all need to take that mess outside. 14-year-old goes outside. 23-year-old sister with the carrier and her 11-month-old are talking to the 14 year old saying, hey, calm down, relax, relax, relax. Conversation turns into argument ensues between those two to the point where the 14 year old pulls out a gun and shoots his sister in the chest. Unaliving her, almost on the spot. Not to be outdone, the 15 year old sees the commotion, comes outside, says, hey, you shot my sister, which is really kind of weird considering they're both brothers but says, you shot my sister, and then he takes out his gun and shoots the 14-year-old in the stomach. Throws a gun, takes off running, and goes to a neighbor's house. Now, <laughs> now, now the 14-year-old was Demarcus Coley, and the 15-year-old was Darkest Coley. The sister, the 23-year-old sister, Abril Baldwin, who was unalived. Well, well, the, the, these are their names. The, these are their names, right? So, all I have to say to this is like, first of all, where's the father? Now, I'm, I'm not saying this like, 
having you know having the father is in the household is is guaranteed to make you know what the bam happen i'm not saying that but i'm saying that you know because you know there are tons of there are tons of variables in an equation that can make it you know one way or another make the answer come out to be one way or another right but i would say in my experience and just in my thinking that the parent or the father is kind of a big part of the equation and when you don't have when you don't have that part of the equation, it, it can really vary the outcome. I would also say like, why are you bringing your kids up like this? To the point that there, you have a 14 and 15 year old who have guns. Now I get it, I don't know what the area or the neighborhood looks like. You know, I, I, I've heard and read during the research of this story that, yeah, the neighborhood may not be the best and it ain't the best place that you wanna bring kids up in. So I, I get that and I understand it. But, I mean, ladies, ladies, I, and this isn't to put the this isn't to put the onus completely on the mothers, but there has to be a level of there has to be a level of responsibility that goes with this. I mean, you have a kid with somebody that you know doesn't want you like that, thinking that having a child is going to make them stay. You you push the father away from the kid because he's rejecting you, so that way you have a built-in amen section to ape your rants about the unfairness when this kid grows up and becomes either somebody that you can't control or somebody who also hates the man that he don't even know. So I'm just saying that's that's a long ass way to be right. That's, that's all I'm saying. And lastly, I would just say like, where is the family loyalty? I mean, how do you usher in family loyalty when the family structure is this much out of whack? I mean, you got multiple children, uh, no marriage, it seems like, you know what I'm saying? And that's, again, not to say that marriage is the answer, uh, but <laughs> it does say, hey, I'm volunteering to do the work with this person in the business of building a life and a family together. I mean, that's the vow that you're actually making. And, and while it's easy to smash and dash, I mean, the real game is when you stay with somebody that you can spend more than a day and you wait to lay, or if you do, you know how to play. And lastly, Russell Wilson got benched. So about two years ago, your boy Danger Russ Wilson was traded to the Broncos in a consolation prize for not getting Aaron Rodgers to come over. And they, they ended up signing a nine-time pro bowler to a seven-year, $260 million contract. So he didn't do that well last year under the previous coach. In comes Super Bowl winning coach Sean Payton, from the New Orleans Saints, and most recently as a sports commentator, coming in to kind of right the ship. So he talks about how Wilson and all his people got different offices up in the, up at the stadium. Everybody got their own parking space and all this stuff. He's like, why, do, why the hell's a quarterback who ain't even producing got all this? Why, why does this? Why do he got all this damn leeway? Who the, is this man? <laughs> who the fuck is this thing? <laughs> I'm sure that's what Sean Payton was thinking. Who the fuck is this? This non-producing act, I wish you would bring your... Do you know what Drew Brees was doing with his one shoulder having it? All right, anyway, <laughs> just saying. So that, that was the beginning of this season when Sean Payton already talked about that. It was like, yeah, that won't be happening under my under my regime. Now, fast forward this season, some, high, some highs, some lows, more lows than highs, especially from a Super Bowl winning coach and Super Bowl winning quarterback, right? So most recently, your boy was benched. And he told a story of basically being threatened uh, shortly following the Broncos win over the last year's Super Bowl champion, the Kansas City Chiefs, saying that he was told to restructure his contract to relieve the team of the $37 million injury portion of which it is fully guaranteed come this March. But they were hoping to push it back to 2025, which could have led to your boy R-Dub staying, but now it's almost inevitable that with this recent benching, dude is gonna be making some cringe-worthy statements like these for a team like yours in the near future. Let's ride. Let's ride. Broncos. Let's country. ride. Perfect. Okay. One more time, Broncos country, let's ride. 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 But the fact is, your boy is basically going to get cut for a lack of performance. I mean, that's basically what it's coming down to. We've seen the same thing happen last year with Derek Carr with the Raiders. And so I can see it. They were basically asking him to restructure his contract so maybe they could bring in some more weapons that 
they will be able to pay for some more weapons to come in to make the team more viable, potentially, with him still at the helm. But I'm sure he was looking at it as, nah, y'all ain't about to take my bread away from me and then be like, we gonna help the team. Don't you wanna help the team? Aren't you a team player? I'm sure he was like, bruh, you signed me for a quarter billion dollars. You think I'm about to let that go? Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck you mean? What do you mean? But I'll ask you, what do you make of his career? Honestly, uh, will it always be more about a one pass that killed the Legion of Boom and this contract is going to hamstring an organization for years? Or will a cooking Russell Wilson with the Jerry Rice Ific <laughs> and nine Pro Bowls be how you remember the man? Will he go down as being the hero or the captain? I'd love to know your thoughts. Now, I will have to leave it there for now. I cannot wait to see what your thoughts are on this or any of the stories that we'll cover today. Please be sure to reach out to your boy at TBS at theblackmanshow.com or find us on all the socials with the same name, Show the Black Man. Now, if you are feeling this show, feel free to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and even share it with somebody that you met only yesterday. Now, peep out our new online store at theblackmanshow.com where you can get up on some of our great designs and merchandise. Now, with that said, I'm your boy, Seven Blackman, and this has been The Blackman Show. Thanks again for watching this far. I hope you all have yourself a safe and healthy 2024, and if all is willing, we'll see you all next time. You take care of each other. Until then, peace, and we out. Just listen to that. Just, just listen to that. Mm.